Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. Actually, this is a special episode because I'm broadcasting live here at Adobe Max in Los Angeles right before the keynote. And I thought I'd share some of the new things that are happening in all the releases that are happening today, starting with Adobe Muse CC for 2014 with the October update. So let's take a look at what's new in Adobe Muse. So I've got Muse open here and I've got a website open called Katie's Cafe. I'm also looking at it in a tiled view where I'm looking at the desktop page on the left side and the phone layout on the right side with the phone mobile menu and the phone layout. Now, of course, um, the, the ability to have a tiled layout, this was introduced in June. And now I can see, of course, both pages or multiple pages at the same time. Now let's take a look at some of the things that are new for October. First and foremost, as you can see on the phone layout, we have some missing pieces. So this graphic needs to be um, placed from the desktop layout onto the phone layout. Now, of course, I can just place it again, or I could copy and paste it like I used to, but now in the October update, I can just go ahead and drag and drop. So now we can drag and drop content from one layout to the other, just making it that much faster to replicate content on mul multiple layouts. However, the problem has been not so much with graphics because graphics are linked from the original source. So if I update this graphic, it's going to update it in both places. But that wasn't the case with text. Text, if I were to drag and drop this text frame over or copy and paste it over, there would be no relationship between them. In other words, if I were to go and update one and I forgot to update the phone one, then the phone layout would be out of date when people visited the website on their phones. So what we can do now is we have a couple of choices. I'm going to show you both ways to, um, to take care of this and you decide which way is best for you. So the first way is using the new synchronized text. And if you're an InDesign user, this is very familiar to you because InDesign has this feature as well. I'm gonna bring up the new content panel and the content panel brings up some content that's already loaded into this particular site, but I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new uh, collection. So we'll just create a new collection and we'll call it the perfect latte. Now, because I didn't have anything selected, it did not create any new content in that collection. It's just a blank, um, a blank collection. Now I'm going to go ahead and select this frame, and I'm going to click the little plus sign here to add, add it as a content tag. And I get to name it as well. So I can call it uh, step one uh, prep or whatever I want. So I'll know what that is going forward instead of just having content, content, content. Uh, similar to naming your layers, so you'll know what your layers are uh, when it comes time to do something in the future. All right, so now that I've got this and it even identifies it with a little tag sticking out from it, I'll go over to the phone layout and I can replicate this as many times as I need it. So I can have it on the phone layout, the tablet layout, or even multiple pages in each layout. And what I'll do is I'll just create a blank frame using the type tool. And now with that frame selected with my selection tool, all I have to do is click on this content to synchronize it to this spot. Now it's synchronized it in a generic kind of way. So that means if I go in now and I were to highlight any of this and change the font here, let's, uh, let's choose a different font, for example. Now that is a different font and I can also even make it a different size. And the, the beauty of it is if I go make any changes, it will update that text in either place I can make the change and it'll update it across the board. So if I notice that, oh, that's a mistake. It shouldn't say running cold water. It should say running hot water. So if I change it here on the mobile layout, because maybe that's the one I happen to be on, it will automatically update it on the desktop layout as well. And if I change it on the desktop layout, it'll update it on the phone and tablet layout and anywhere else I have it because the text is now synchronized. So you no longer have to go when you want to make a change uh, from layout to layout to layout making the same change. So this is going to make uh, or it's going to speed up your workflow for working with a desktop, tablet and phone layout much, much faster. Now, there is one caveat to this. There is one downside. You'll notice that when I go to uh, select this text, if I go make any change, let's say I want it running to be bold or a different color. Well, if I change the color, it's going to change it to all of it for that entire frame 
because synch uh, that's just a limitation of this feature right now. So synchronize text, the text in the frame has to all be the same style. Uh, same font, same size, same color, but they don't have to be the same across layouts. So this one's larger font, it could be a different font, it could be bold, they could be different across layouts, but everything in the frame has to be the same. So if that doesn't work for you, here's another way to do this. So I noticed that uh, in step two, it says mash down in both places and they're not synchronized. These two have nothing to do with each other. So if I change it here, it's not gonna change it there. But the other way, let's uh, get rid of the content panel for a moment. The other way to handle multiple changes now is a brand new feature in Muse, um, which we've had in other programs for years, find and replace. Because with find and replace, it will not force you to change anything with the styling and the styling can be different uh, across multiple layouts and it will not affect the styling as long as you're not changing the words to be something different then of course it will lose the styling on those words but otherwise the rest of the styling in the frame can be different so if I wanted to make uh, coffee in this particular layout if I wanted to make coffee um, perhaps a different color let's make it a green just so it stands out uh, that green will not change or first of all I can make the change just to that one word without affecting other words and it will not change if I don't change that word. So let's do a search and replace or find and replace to see how that works. I'm gonna do a find and instead of it being mash down, it should be tamp down. And normally search and replace or find and replace works on a specific page, but here's the beauty of it is I can say do it site wide, do it on all the layouts. And I'll just say replace all and it found two instances, instances, and it made those two replacements. So it's changed them both to, you know, from tamp or mash down to tamp down in both places. So you can either set up synchronized text to keep things up to date, or you can use find and replace, which is quick, fast, requires no setup, or you can use both. Like I've used both. I've got the first paragraph synchronized, I've got the second paragraph not synchronized, and I just did a find and replace. Okay, a couple more things that are new. Uh, let's scroll down to the end of this. And since this is the mobile layout and people are most likely gonna visit this with their phone, I wanna emphasize that we do have a takeout option. So I went to my Creative Cloud uh, assets, I searched for coffee in the market assets area, and I found this nice coffee travel uh, cup. Now you'll find a lot of vector assets in the Creative Cloud market assets. They're all, you know, they're vector, they're cool, but nine times out of 10, if it's a vector file, it's gonna be an SVG format, scalable vector graphics. You can open those up in Illustrator and convert them to a GIF, a ping, or some other format, because you had to <laughs> if you wanted to use those files in Muse. Now I'm very pleased to, to say that Muse supports SVG. So I, first of all, I don't have to do any more conversions. And second of all, I get the advantage of scalable vector graphics resolution independent on my site. So if I'm serving that site up and someone's looking at it on a high res, high DPI or retina display, they get nice crisp vector graphics. Or if I wanna scale it larger than the original, they still get nice clean vector graphics. So that's the beauty of SVG. And if you're using the market assets, the market assets are in SVG if they're uh, vector, and you can now take advantage of those as well. So here it is. Here's the coffee travel cup in SVG. I'll just go ahead and drag it right into Muse. And Muse places it nice and large. We'll go ahead and scale that down uh, for our phone layout here. Scale it down a little bit more. And we'll push that down uh, to the bottom here giving ourselves um, that logo for the bottom. And again, that is in SVG format, which is now supported here in Muse. So I've got scalable vector graphics, synchronized text, find and replace, drag and drop between layouts, what else? Well, a couple more things. Uh, under the file menu, now all your publish options are grouped together. So this is kind of a JDI, just do it feature. You have your upload to FTP, publish to Business Catalyst, or export the entire site as a folder of HTML. And last but not least, if you are using FTP, uh, this update now supports 
both standard F FTP and secure FTP or SFTP. So if, you're, if your site uh, user can take advantage of, or your host can take advantage of secure FTP, it just makes your site that much more secure when uploading content back and forth. So that's it for this update of what's new for the October 2014 release of Adobe Muse CC. And thanks, we'll catch you on the next one. And I'm gonna head over to the keynote in just a few minutes, but I've got some other videos to make. Take care.